when I got into the arts, the first thing I realized was that, that no one would teach me how to do things that I needed to know to make sculpture. I tried to get into the Boston School of Fine Arts and I brought my first sculpture that I'd done. I was 38 at the time. I was nervous. I'd been fired from my family company. I didn't know how to apply or to be interviewed or anything like that. And I was turned down. I entered that piece in an international competition. It was my very first piece of work. And there were 7,000 entries and I won. If I were to have to describe myself, I describe myself as someone who is trying to make an art out of living in many different ways and learning different aspects of life, which I can apply to my art or apply to the different aspects of my life. One of the things that I get when I buy art is that I share with the artist's enjoyment of life. And that's what I loved about the Impressionist work. I mean, I know that he sat out there and chose that spot and said, oh my God, this is great. I've got to capture this. And so I get a little bit of that, oh my God. And to have that in life, on your walls as you get up in the morning, to share that, that uh, art is communication. That is what the artist is communicating. He's sharing with you his experience. If that is there, but that's what art is, I think. One of the most um, special parts about him as an artist and as a human being, he has a, a terrific wit and it's both, um, it's both subtle and it's very subtle in some of his pieces. And then he can also just be having a ravingly good time creating something. And, and then, uh, you know, he shares that laughter with all of us. When people have an opportunity to, to be with Seward Johnson and to really talk with him, um, they're surprised in several ways. And one of the ways they're surprised is that he is, um, he's a very well-read, very philosophical, intellectual person. And the, the sense of fun that's very evident in his work sometimes belies the fact that he's got this other background and he's got this very um, razor-sharp mind working behind it. I have come to appreciate in a much bigger way what he's doing and, and the message he has. And there's a lot of love in his sculptures and um, I think that's important and that's probably what people pick up. A lot of times we don't know on an unconscious level what we're responding to. We just know it feels good and it brings, you know, brings a smile to our face. And that's art and that's genuine from his soul and his intent and it, to me it's very legitimate. The art art establishment and I never saw eye to eye. The art establishment was based on abstraction. They got to the point where they completely alienated the public. It became almost an elitist uh, situation. And it got to be that you pretended to understand abstract art when you really didn't. Art is such an individual experience. Being an artist is an individual experience. For my work, the most important thing is that, that the public interact with it. It is public art. It is not art in public places. The art of my work is in the interaction. It is not the aesthetic. And that's very important. And that the public enjoy it and it enhances and it also civilizes an area that otherwise wouldn't be civilized. It, it peopleizes it. it. It makes it inviting to the human being. And I've done this with a number of paintings. All of a sudden you are in a two-dimensional scene that is three-dimensionalized, and you're part of it. Your own existence as you know it is thrown into question here because all of a sudden become part of a canvas for all you know. He has a way of integrating his humor and integrating his, the slyness of his intellect into the pieces, which is very, uh, very clever and very fun. And that's always been one of the things that he's been trying to bring forward in his work is, let's get back down to our basic humanness. Um, 
he used to say that his sculptures weren't even art unless someone was there interacting with them, that that was the completing element because the reaction and the interaction was part of his art. What is really special about his work is that he is able to immortalize, capture in bronze, the miraculous aspects of ordinary activity because Seward's art is democratic, it's totally democratic, and that's part of its beauty. It's not elitist, and it really reflects some, I think, heartfelt values of American people, and everybody can rally to it, everyone can relate to it. There's a message of hope in his work because it, it gives everyone clues about how to connect in their own lives with other people, with the sculptures. Paintings often celebrate very common and everyday pleasures and ways people find themselves, which related to my work. And I was saying, stop and think, hey, you know, that's worth celebrating. And uh, that's worth commemorating in, this, in a sculpture, in a statue. There are, there are many layers to what I'm about. One is to fool your eye, to make you bow to a piece of bronze. The other is the celebration of doing what I think you should do to affirm your own humanity, which is what I celebrate. My work has found itself around the world, in Japan and in Hong Kong and in Singapore and in Israel, Australia. In this country, oh, in New York City, the Hawaiian Islands, Chicago, I have a number, and in Texas, and almost every state in the Union. It is so much fun doing it. I mean, you know, I'll get ideas in the middle of the night, I'll forget about them, they'll reappear later and I'll change them a little bit. I just use everything that I do as an idea for other things that I'm going to do. Whenever I feel I'm going to run out of subject matter, on a spring day, I'd go through Central Park, and I, I could have 500 new things to do. And uh, though I do like to make people smile, after they think, like really, I like them to smile at what, what I made them think. I want people to go away happy, uh, or thoughtful, and changed, definitely affected, but if they can, if I can make them go through two or three different emotions, that's even better. There are sometimes social statements. It could be called just plain life and humor, but I do it as a way to give little prizes of discovery, that the thinking didn't stop just with the first impact, that there are other things to discover but I'm having fun doing whatever I'm doing in the meantime. I want you to really get out there and really find something. Get into the park and, and find what we have to offer you and, and have a good time. Thank you. Uh, you too. <laughs>